that the moment you have, 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 we have a higher deficit, we are accumulating debt. Debt today, it means that it has to be repaid tomorrow. So we are increasing future costs. That, that's the whole idea. Then the most important thing, and maybe coming from the private sector, you have to understand, the moment you see a larger fiscal deficit, it tells you that government is going to finance that budget through borrowing, or it is, and that can contribute to instability in future because if you don't borrow adequately. The second thing is that you are going to see a lot of instability because you are accumulating debt in the future. So we have to say, how much resources do we have? How can we remit that gap? And that is where, after due consideration and uh, going through and checking through all our resources, we have said that that is what we have to, to live with. That is what is likely to support growth. I started by saying we need to support that fragile growth. You don't su support that fragile growth by learning a large deficit, isn't it? You start take, taking stock in terms of where the pain points are. I don't know about the audit. What I know is that we have a committee that is verifying that is legally going to do its work. The second thing is that we are starting from 2005 to, 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 to 2022. What is it? We want to make sure that we stem that bedding bills menace, isn't it? We don't want to know, we don't want to talk about how much will be the padding bills. What we have reported is how many cases came up and how much before the, the verification process is going on. But the bottom line is this, that audit is not equivalent to the committee that we have. We are creating a finality. There could have been an audit. It may have given some uh, some, some pointers in terms of where we are. But right now, we want to make sure that we close that chapter. We close that chapter because pending bills is a menace. On one side, those who are still holding debt on the government and have not been paid for years, as we are starting from 2005, you can imagine what it means, what it means to their suffering, what happens to their investment, and what happens to their businesses. That's why we want to say, this is the end of that. We want to do this with a finality. We should appreciate that. And they look at history and look, try to live down that, that, back his, that bad history. We want to live it down by, by coming to a finality. Okay? I showed that the wage bill consumes 38.2%, isn't it? It is very clear. I said it very clearly. You know, I am a teacher. Please, I have to mark your exams eh? <laughs> if, you are, if you are not careful. But the most important thing is that we have to move to the recommended rate of 35%, isn't it? The second thing is that we also need to look at the mix, the skills mix. And there is a issue in public sector. That's why we want to go back to SRC and say, please, let's get back. First of all, we freeze everything. And second, let's go back to the mix. And third, let's also try to see what other measures can help us in terms of improving this. Efficiency in public sector is not the numbers. It should be the quality, isn't it? And that is what, that is the premise, and that is the pillars that at which I, I, I try to show how public, uh, public finance, uh, sorry, pub, 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 uh, the, the management or even the processes we are referring to uh, SRC to help us in terms of this. It is painful, as you can see, if it's 38.2% in terms of total budget, total, total outlay expenditures, it's, it's very high. But I'm also, we are also moving a extra step to say we have to have the quality.